Welcome to 5 Minute Physics. This video is about efficiency. As we saw in the energy stores and pathway video, whenever energy is transferred, some of it always ends up in a store we didn't intend. We waste energy. Usually, it ends up in the thermal store of the surroundings. Important to remember for exams. An efficient process or machine is one which doesn't waste too much energy one where most of the energy we supply is usefully transferred. It's easy to see that being able to measure efficiency could be pretty useful when choosing between two products, for example. I mean, how else would you decide between these two? Which one would you back? For your exam, you need to be able to calculate efficiency, either as a decimal or as a percentage, e.g. as 0.2 or 20%. They could ask for either. You also need to be able to remember the equations and the good news, or not, is that efficiency can be calculated using power as well as energy. So you might need these two as well. Or you could just apply a bit of intelligence, careful, and learn this one, which kind of covers all bases. Input and output could be energy or power, although don't use one of each in a calculation. This is physics after all, not pick and mix. Then multiply by 100 if you want a percentage. Pretty simple, really. Just make sure you get the two energies the right way around. There's an easy way to check this. Because some energy is always wasted, efficiency is always less than one or 100%. If you get an efficiency bigger than this, you're dividing by the wrong number. So let's put this into practice with a real life example where comparing efficiencies might be useful. The choice you might face any day of the week. You wake up, you open your curtains and you see that it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, there's a light breeze. It's just a shame you have to go to school, really. But how to get there? Conditions are perfect for your hot air balloon. But you've got a shiny new bike as well. Which to use? Decisions, decisions. Well, like any good physicist, you decide to base your choice on efficiency, which will waste the least energy. Time to crunch some numbers. If we choose the hot air balloon, a total of 350,000 joules 350 kilojoules, would need to be transferred to our kinetic store throughout the journey. We could say that 350 kilojoules would be the total work done on you. Your kinetic store is where you want the energy transferred to, so this would be the useful energy output. It's worth noting though that you'd never have this much in your kinetic store at one point. If you did, you'd be travelling at about 250 miles per hour. The most you'd have at one time would be more like 250 joules. But all the time you're moving, energy is being transferred to your surroundings via the mechanical pathway through friction and air resistance. To keep moving, you have to keep topping up your kinetic store. That's why you have to keep pedaling a bike to travel at a steady speed. Speaking of bikes, if you choose yours this morning, you'll have to travel a bit further. You, of course, can't just fly over everything. So maybe 400,000 joules would have to be transferred to your kinetic store in total. 400 kilojoules of useful energy output. For the hot air balloon to fly, we have to burn fuel to heat up the air inside the envelope, the balloon bit, making it less dense. We're transferring energy from the chemical store of the fuel to the thermal store of the air. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay there for long. It keeps being lost to the thermal store of the surroundings. That old chestnut again. In total, to keep the thermal store of your balloon's air topped up during your flight to school, you'd have to put in about 7 million joules, 7 megajoules, of energy. On the other hand, if you cycle, you need to transfer about a million joules from your chemical to your kinetic store. Using those numbers, the reality becomes pretty clear. Glamorous the bloom might be, if we divide the useful output by the total input, we get an efficiency of just 0.05, or multiplying by 100, 5%. Either way, not too clever really we'd be wasting 95% of the energy we put in. The bike's a bit more positive though. Following the same process, we get an efficiency of 0.4, 40%. So all in all, that's pretty conclusive. And anyway, how do you've got the balloon home again against the wind? So to summarize, efficiency is a measure of how much of the energy we supply is transferred usefully by a machine or by a process. Efficiency can be calculated using this formula. And we could use energy or we could use power in that. It doesn't matter as long as we stick to one or the other. And of course, you do need to memorize this formula. 
And then finally, efficiency always has to be less than one or 100%. There's no exceptions to this. If you get an answer where that isn't the case, you've done something wrong. Thanks for watching this five minute physics video. Please check out our other videos covering GCSE physics in simple five minute lessons.